Get involved in this. You can come and find me afterwards. You can come to the meeting on Wednesday night at 6 o'clock. We're going to have a tanker-free BC meeting here at Occupy Vancouver. Uh, and you can join with the folks who are opposing the Keystone Pipeline, the Enbridge Pipeline, and say we're opposed to all these fuses on the world's largest carbon bomb. Bill McKibben calls it defusing a carbon bomb. And I think that's exactly what we're involved in right now, is, is an act of defusing a carbon bomb. And ultimately, we, though, we need to also talk about the solutions. We need to talk about the alternatives. And part of that is public transit instead of freeways. Part of that is our bike lanes and our walk into work and our living close to work. Part of that is local food. Thank you for bringing that up. Because, you know, that really is all connected. You know, bringing our food in on those tankers is a really, really big problem, right? You know, the, uh, the, br the UBC farm is a critical piece of this. It's where our farmers are being taught. It's, there's about 70 kids a year who come out of that place learning to be farmers. And it's one of the only places where that's happening anywhere in the area. It's also where a lot of the food that's consumed at UBC is coming from. And there was a plan. There was actually a plan to pave over a big chunk of that farm recently. And of course, the South Fraser Perimeter Road I just mentioned that goes through Delta, connecting Delta Port to Highway 1. That highway, if it was built, would, would go through about, uh, about a thousand acres of some of our best farmland in total, the Gateway Project, not just South Fraser Perimeter Road, but all their associated highways. And you know, that, that's our food security, right there. That's, that's our food security. You know, so we need to be thinking really seriously about these issues because they're all connected. You know, how we build our communities, how we live on our communities, how we get ourselves around, where our energy comes from, it's all part of the same sort of bigger picture of what kind of community we want to have. And I, for one, don't want to be the gateway to the global warming. I think we need to be a healthy community that sets an example and that partners with the rest of the world to actually find solutions. Here, here. Once again, my name is Ben West. I'm from the Wilderness Committee, and I'm going to pass it back over to Jane to talk some more about, uh, about the alternative energy stuff. Um, it'll be here somewhere. I'm not sure exactly where, but when we figure it out, we'll announce it on Wednesday. And once again, if you didn't hear, tankerfreebc.org is where you can find info about the tankers. Thanks again. I think we pretty much covered the tar sands in the process of talking about the pipelines and the oil tankers. So I want to move on to sustainable energy a little. Um, there was a study published, I believe it was last week or the week before, showing that solar energy creates seven times more jobs than coal or nuclear or natural gas. It's the job creator. It's, that's not the only reason why it is the way forward, but it's the one that gets talked about a lot in America. You know, oh, it's going to cost jobs, and we get so many more jobs. Uh, with doing other things. No, no, no. What you get if you construct a new coal plant, nuclear plant, whatever the headache is going to be, is you get temporary construction jobs. And that's it. And you get a small number of ongoing jobs. But if you talk about going with sustainable energy, you get greater, you get both a greater number of jobs and the jobs have greater longevity. So the jobs issue, or the jobs aspect, which is talked about, I think, more in America than here, is bogus. If you're serious about jobs, you want sustainable energy. <clears throat> There's been a lot of chatter about how you know, sustainability costs more and we can't afford it. Well, guess what? If you take the subsidies out of coal, take the subsidies out of nuclear, take the subsidies out of the things that aren't sustainable, sustainable energy costs less. And it costs less by a big enough factor. <clears throat> it costs enough less to get even bankers interested. Bankers will not fund nuclear. I don't think they're going to fund coal anymore. That's still a little bit iffy. Nobody's going to touch a lot of the stuff that isn't sustainable. But the soft path, path things that are sustainable can attract private investment. There's already just that by itself tells you that it's got better uh, risk avoidance, it's got better everything. It's the way forward. Um, I mentioned peak oil earlier. We are heading into an era where we're going to have fewer and fewer hydrocarbons in our lives. That means less coal, less oil, less gas in your tank, less everything, and supply and demand. It means that the cost of energy is going to go up. The cost of your coal energy will go up. That's your electricity in most cases. Is that electricity here? Yeah, you've got coal-fired electricity. Oh, you've got, oh good, you've got hydro. Yeah, we're, we're, I know you've got plenty of electricity. <laughs> Okay. 
hydro, hydro it, it's already existing. I assume nobody's going to take out the dam. It's better than building anything that would be fossil fuel related. The point I want to go for is that as we get further and further into the peak era, sorry? Okay, ben, Ben's going to address that. Good. Uh, as we get into the era when hydrocarbon energy, that's oil, gas, and uh, coal, as it becomes more expensive, which is part of why the economy is sinking, that's another side topic to be talked about, that means that sustainable makes more and more sense. The more expensive the fossil stuff gets, the more you want sustainable. You want sustainable because it's clean. That's the number one reason. You also want sustainable because it's the wave of the future. As hydrocarbons get to be scarce and intermittent and we start getting into other kinds of problems with them, sustainable stuff is going to be all we've got. And that right there ought to make it the top line investment. I'm going to let Ben talk to you about what's going on here. Thanks, Jane. So uh, the question was, where does our energy come from right now, and, and what's the plan, uh, you know, in terms of the Site C Dam, which you probably heard of. Who here knows about the Site C Dam? Most people? Okay. So, I mean, there was, a, there was a number of dams that were proposed back in the day when we switched to largely hydro-based uh, energy. Um, you know, we're talking decades ago at this point. The Site C Dam has been a controversy for decades. Um, you know, it would flood a lot of our most important farmland in the Northeast. Uh, the problem with the Site C Dam, beyond the immediate impact of it, is that, that that dam would actually, it sounds like the march is coming back. <laughs> All right, so the Site C dam, um, a lot of that energy, what do you think the energy is being used for? Heating uh, our homes and bringing electricity to our houses, maybe? If you're a little bit curious about where it's going, fracking. Fracking, coal, and the tar sands. Site, and for fracking, the earth actually has been linked to earthquakes, some people believe. And, uh, and I think that's worth looking at a lot more. So, I mean, the question is, you know, when we're building alternative energy, for me, I think what, what we really need to ask ourselves is, how do we actually phase out the carbon-based and dirty energy sources, right? Like, just building energy for the sake of building energy, I think, is problematic. But what we need to think is, okay, when do we need energy? Well, we got a hydro-based economy, at least in terms of energy, and it gets cold here in the winter. When does the hydropower produce the most energy? Well, it pr produces it during the spring freshet, when the, when the water runoff happens from the glaciers melting, right? So when the glaciers melt, you get more energy at that point, but it's when we don't really need it. We need it in the winter. So it is about where 90% of our energy comes from. But the problem is most of the green energy, the so-called green energy that we're building here in, in, in BC, is actually producing more energy during the spring freshet but it isn't producing the energy when we need it, which is in the winter. So it's not helping us stop from importing coal-powered energy uh, from the United States uh, when we need it in the winter, but it is producing energy that we can export to the United States. Of course, we need as much green energy as we can find, but the question is, do we want it at all costs or not? And I think I'm probably gonna stop talking now because somebody's walking towards me and the march is coming back. So anyway, if you wanna know more about these issues, check out the Wilderness Committee's website, wildernesscommittee.org. Hi everyone, the 99 is coming home. Welcome.